Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4 BMG. Today on HOA Ham, we're going to take a look at the RT3S from Redivis. This will be a quick look at this radio today, which I'll explain why in a couple of minutes. This radio was sent to me free of charge for review. 95% of what I do on the channel is funded out of the Hughes checking account, so I'm glad to review items sent to me at no charge, assuming they are good quality, and they meet a valid use case need in the ham community. This is a dual band UHF VHF HT with both analog and digital capabilities and specifically DMR. The antenna connector on the radio is SMA female, meaning I already have what I need to make some alterations. It has a 2000 milliamp hour battery with a nice positive latch. It can be programmed from the front panel or using the CPS, which is downloadable from the Redivis website. It looks similar to all the other DMR CPS software that I've used. Let's look at the first few things I wanna do with the radio when I pull it from the packaging. Let's talk about how a radio feels in our hands. Let's face it, we put one of these radios in our hands and we have an immediate opinion as to how it feels. Does it feel like a toy? I'm not knocking the UV5R. The UV5R is how I got my start in ham radio. I own a number of UV5Rs. I'm a fan. But the feel of quality in the hand of this radio compared to its peers you know, we can tell that it feels a little bit lesser quality. The Anytone 878 series is what I would consider the standard of DMR radios, in my opinion. How does the Redivis feel compared to the 878? The Redivis feels pretty solid, definitely an improvement in quality over the UV5R, but not quite up to the pace of the 878. And when we compare to the ID52, well, let's just stop because there is no fair comparison. All the radios here in front of you pale in comparison to the ID52. I've had it for just a brief period of time. As soon as you get your hands on it, you are absolutely amazed at the quality feel of that radio. But the Redivis, a solid feel, good quality quality. It feels like a, just a little bit less of a brick than the Anytone 878. And I mean that in the kindest sense of the word. I like the feel of the brick and the Redivis feels good. First up, let's dispatch of this stock antenna and let's get a BNC adapter on top of this. This is how all of my HTs are run. I always want the ability to take my signal stick, right? <laughs> Unwrap it. Super flexible antenna and you have a BNC connector and a very high quality antenna. And when I'm in the shack, I typically operate with a stub. Um, obviously your stub is gonna be limited when you get outdoors and your distance will be restricted. However, in the shack, a lot of times I'm using a hotspot and the stub is more than sufficient to do this. I've had to adjust some settings on my camera to get the screen of the Redivis to show up. It's a fantastic screen. If it doesn't come through good quality here in the video, I promise you it is a high quality looking screen. But I've adjusted some of the settings so that it appears better, so everything else around is going to look a little dark, but hopefully the screen comes through okay. Here's one of the first things we're going to need to adjust on this radio. I don't know if you heard that, my microphone is directional. It is pointed away from the radio, but I promise you that was loud. We need to do something about that beep first and foremost. So let's go ahead and take care of that. We're going to go get into the menu settings. Your first button here is menu in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, the green button, menu. Go down one to utilities, confirm, confirm radio settings. Let's find tones and alerts. Confirm, that's what I want to look at. All tones, let's turn them off for now because I don't know what other tones are going to come about that I don't want to hear. All tones off. Now I'll start hitting the back button here, the red button back. Oh, look at that, the beep is gone, yay. Let's do that again, let's turn it off, turn it back on and see if that beep is there. It is not. Now, that's certainly not a defect. Um, I wish it could be handled via volume adjustment, but it appears to be simple on or off. Next up, let's make an adjustment to the backlit. For me, when I'm first learning a radio, I like the screen to be backlit for a longer period of time because I'm usually looking at the menu trying to figure out what to do to it. 
And in the case of doing a review for you, I don't want that screen constantly going off on me. So what I'm going to do is go down to utilities, confirm that, go to radio settings. And by the way, this is, you know, only my first time through this radio. So you can see how intuitive the menu system is. It's actually quite good. Five seconds is default. I'm going to go up to always. Now, you wouldn't want to do this if, um, you know, this is your daily carry. That, that, that would just drain your battery. I'm putting it in always mode because I never want this screen to go off when I'm talking to you about this particular radio. All right, the screen is coming through okay through my camera. Like I said, I've had to adjust the camera settings. I'm looking at my computer monitor and I can promise you the screen on the radio looks much better than it's coming through my camera and my monitor. It is a color screen and it is a very good color screen on the Redivus. So that's a good thing. Okay, I've made the adjustments I want for me while I'm learning this radio. I'll take several weeks, if not a couple of months, before I give you a full review on it. I've changed the backlit on the screen so the menu is not constantly going dark on me. I've changed my antenna so I can use a stub in the shack or get my signal stuff, a signal stick on it when I get outdoors. And I got rid of that beep. I don't like my keypad beeping at me when I'm pressing the buttons. My Eye in the Sky cam is a repurposed old iPhone. It does an adequate job for me, but it too struggles to pick up the beauty and clarity of this color screen on the RT3S. It really is a superb screen. Based on how long this radio has been on the market and the number of favorable video reviews by YouTubers whom I trust, I would say that there would be no reason for you to need to wait till my review is complete for you to pick up this radio if it makes sense for your use case. I'm offering this summary prior to the full review because the holidays are upon us. Perhaps friends are asking for gift ideas for you, or you want to gift yourself a little something nice for the holidays. Maybe you've been kicking the tires on DMR and you're not ready to plunk down $300 plus for one of the upper end units, but $100 or sub $100, that doesn't scare you too much. And it's low risk to test out DMR. If you don't like DMR in the end, you can try one of the other digital modes through a hotspot with this. The radio itself will only get you DMR. With a hotspot, you can cross mode to most other digital modes and try those out. But in the end, if you don't like any of them, you have a really high quality analog radio, low risk in this particular case. To be sure, there are differences between the most expensive DMR radio and this sub $100 radio. Perhaps one of the most significant would be contact capacity. On the most expensive Anytone today, it has a contact capacity of 500,000. The Anytone 878 I own has a contact capacity of 300,000. I'm not sure that the DMR database yet has 300,000 contacts, so I'm getting pretty close to my limit. This radio by Redivis has a contact capacity of 100,000. Now, what does that mean? It doesn't impact whether or not you can make a QSO with any other person with a DMR ID. It simply means if you don't have their contact information loaded into the radio, when you talk with them, what you will see on the screen is their DMR ID as opposed to their call sign information, and on some radios, their actual name, or what they associate with their DMR ID. So it doesn't impact radio functionality from a QSO perspective, it just impacts what information you're seeing on your screen. So you have two options. You can be more judicious on the number of contacts that you load into the radio and only load a select group. And then you have 100,000 that you could load into this Redivus radio, or you just don't care and you don't load any contacts. Again, does not affect the ability to have QSOs. If that's important to you, then get ready to plunk down the Benjamins because that's what it's gonna take to get to the higher end radios. Otherwise, here is a very cost-effective way to test DMR and see if it's for you. Hope you found this helpful, friend. Links below to this radio and other things you've seen in the video. Talk to you soon. 73.